नमो तगवत अर्हत साधु ओम इच टू माई गुरु बांधे जी माई मोहन सिंह नमो बुद्धाय I have a beautiful gatha from Dhammapada. This is from Dhammapada. Muncha pure, muncha patcha to, majje muncha bhava sapar guru, sabbat vimutta manaso, napuran jati jaran upehisi. The beautiful meaning. I want everybody to read this. Everybody. Let God be dwelling over the past. Let God dreaming over the future, and let God hanging to the present. Cope your own existence with the mind liberated in every way. Do not come again, again, word to word, and word to each. Silence. This is actually um. A beautiful uh, story we we see in Dhammapada. You might have heard about Uggasena. Uggasena, such a beautiful story. Okay, Uggasena was a very rich young man, born from a very wealthy family, from his uh, good marriage, the power, and then um, one day there was a huge festival. With an acrobat, the family of acrobats showing some somersaults in the sky. So he went to see this show, and all of a sudden, he caught the uh, the the beauty of a beautiful girl giving such a huge, tremendous show in the acrobat team. She is like giving a show like. He standing on a bamboo pole, somersaults in the sky, and comes back to the bamboo pole to the same distance. And this young man was inspired by seeing this young beautiful girl. And he came home and said to his mom and dad, "I don't eat. I don't sleep. I don't do anything." If I do not get the hand of this girl, so that's how he was struggling. And then the father of this young man went to the father of that acrobat girl and said, "My my son is wishing to get the hand of your daughter. He doesn't eat. He stops sleeping. He he stops speaking." If you do not agree, my son will die," he said. He said, "The father of the girl said, 'No. If your son is good at showing acrobats, uh, the how do you say the, the performance, he can't accept the suggestions. The proposal is rejected." Anyways, he said, "No, my son is dying without the hand of your daughter. Please, I will give you as much as you ask me. The money. All right." He gave lots of money to the man, and they agreed to the marriage. And then he married, but he knew nothing about acrobats. The girl is so good, so smart. and she gives so much of inspiring shows to make other people happy in the entire jambudeep in india she was very famous and then um, this man is nothing but the husband and then the, she gave birth to a beautiful son what he does was like he 
carries the the i don't know the tools and the for the show like you know so many things they need the bamboo poles the cart the boxes he carries everything to the show that's how he support the team and then uh when she was a mother she was not happy about her husband why not she's not good at anything even though he, he was a rich person he doesn't do anything good in the show when he make the baby uh, how do you say love right? what is it eh? lullaby lullaby so, so she says your father is nothing your father doesn't know anything for something like that. something insulting she says to make the baby smooth and sleep went goes to sleep she says something really bad <laughs> this man was thinking this is such a really bad thing huh? and then i'm insulted by this woman anyways i will learn the show i will learn the skill he was determined to learn he went to the father of the my wife and said i am here to learn whatever you teach me he said if you are ready i'm ready to teach you he taught everything what he knew the father of the girl and he was so smart to learn everything in a very short period of time that man was so smart smart maybe the smartest in the team giving shows to people made lots of money they became extremely rich with the with the money they earned they made with the good combination the woman and then the man everybody was happy one day the buddha when he was in the meditation early morning you know buddha every day had had a morning meditation to see the world to survey the world if there is any person who needs the support of the buddha maybe for the understanding the realization buddha goes there maybe with the psychic powers buddha goes maybe walking buddha goes to people and gives dhamma when they when they listen to the dhamma they understand that day with the serving of this concentration buddha saw this ugasena the man he is well developed he has a really developed concentration and then the holds some qualities inside from the past accumulated and then the merit is so rich and about to write with the most compassionate feeling with the sangha sangha is the yes buddha went to the show the people were like talking and the buddha is coming to see the acrobat show today thousands of people in the ground you know it's a huge ground very big in the middle of the ground there is a bamboo pole very long very high that's how they show the acrobat acrobat performances and then buddha is coming to the ground people was like thousands of people maybe more than that all of a sudden look back to see the buddha now ugasena is on the foot of the bamboo pole very very high he was so inspired he was so uh, how do we say it? excited to show the, the 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 performance from his side and all of a sudden the, the attention from the people he he was so so much attracted by the people from the audience all of a sudden he lost that attraction when the buddha was coming with the sangha why the buddha is the most beautiful attractive person all the attention went to the buddha ugasena was not happy about this why now he needs this attention from the people to show this buddha it is the muggalana venerable bhante the, the monk you know the muggalana a muggalana venerable arahant bhante was foremost in psychic powers he is the the most skillful uh, monk among among the among the community 
if you go to the, the upstairs in the meditation hall, you see the 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 blue color statue of the Mogala Bhante, the chief one of the chief disciples. Okay, Buddha said to Mogala, Mogala, go to Gosena and say and ask him to show the back, the, the the performance, the skills. Mogalana with this, like when he was asked, been said, went to Ugasena and said, Ugasena, you are so skillful. Now it's for your time, your turn to show your skills to the Buddha, to the Sangha, to the audience. Ugasena got the traction again from the people. He was so, uh, how do we say, thrilled, happy. Climbed up to the bamboo pole, sitting on the pole. Maybe it's very high. I we don't have information about the about the pole. It's very high though. And Buddha said, "Ugasena, it's your turn. Make the people happy." Ugasena, with his all concentration and energy and a strength. And all the skills he gathered together and jumped up for 14 somersaults, 14 perfect, complete rounds. And comes back to the bamboo pole again to stand. That's how he did, how he shows his uh, the, the performance. In the sky, being somersaulting with the said this gata. Muncha pure muncha pachato, majje muncha bhava sapargo, sabbat vimuttaman so na purang jati jarang pehisi. Ugasena, let go of regret over the past. Such a beautiful thing, huh? Doesn't matter of the regret. Let go of this in the past. This is all about like the um. The mind works, so we go, uh, our mind always goes to the past to regret whatever. Let go of that. And let go of dreaming over the future. Why? Why not? The future has not arrived yet. You're not sure about the future. Regretting and being unhappy and daydreaming is useless. And let go of clinging to the present. These are the three things, actually, he said. Clinging to the present means stay comfortable. I understand being mindful, not clinging to anything, not grasping anything. Say, me, mine, or myself. Me, mine, or myself. That's how the Buddha asked you to practice. Not me, not mine, not myself. It is not like you hate yourself. What is it all about? It is a beautiful way of letting go. And stay present without any hatred, without any desire, without any delusion. Raga, Dvesha, Moha. Raga is the desire. Dvesha is the, uh, the, the hatred. Moha is the delusion. And stay mindful in the present moment. Remember? Let go of regret over the past. Let go of dreaming of the future and let go of clinging to the present. Such a beautiful way of life, huh? If you can, right? You're comfortable. No worries. If you have maybe food, maybe good food, maybe not, it doesn't matter. If the people say good, if the people speak to you bad, it doesn't matter. Why not? You're comfortable. No clinging. No regrets. Go beyond existence means overcome all the suffering in the world. With the mind liberated in every way. Do not come again and again to the world of birth and old age. Which is like be liberated and end up your journey of sansara. From this world to the next, in this up, 
the suffering, the permanent freedom from suffering, permanent uh, realization, and complete destruction of defilements, the impurities. And then you have no rebirth, which is called the Nibbana, the highest goal of the path. When this was being said, in the sky, his concentration was well developed. You know what? This is very challenging to come to the same level, same spot, to stand. It's such a huge skill. With that concentration, he was listening. He was listening and recollecting his understanding and realization was very quick. He understood everything. What everything? Not the future, not the past, not the present. Letting go of that desire. He stood as the liberated one on the Bengal path. As an Araha. This is such a huge skill, right? He, we, we, why don't we do this? So they have practiced this Dhamma a long ago, very much. They have ripened. When the Buddha speaks to them, they are ready to understand. They are, their wisdom is well developed. That's why we need to practice every day, all the time. When this is like complete, our practice is complete, we will get the same opportunity. So with that being said, and when he was being liberated, he came down from the bamboo board. Directly to the Buddha. Bowed. At the lotus feet of the Buddha. Said. Please Bhante. Out of your compassion. I became a liberated one. Please offer me the opportunity. To join the order of monks. Now you know that. When a lay person attains that state of. Uh, arahanship, only the arahanship, they should come to the order. They definitely should come to the order. Monks. If they don't, they pass into final Nibbana on the same day. Maybe a female disciple, maybe a lay disciple, whoever, if they come to the highest level of, of understanding the arahanship, they should become a monk or they should become a nun on the same day. If they don't, they die on the same day. You know the reason? Arahanship is, like, is a heavy thing. Only, the, only that saffron robe can bear. That's natural law. So, Ugasena, being an Arahant, being a fully enlightened one, came to the Buddha and uh, you know, there is only to the Buddha the, uh, this skill uh, can do. So, um, you know, that it is called the Ehibik Upabhaja in Pali, which is like Buddha said, come on. With the hand, he said, come. Psychic power. He, is, he has the, the bald head, like shaven head, and then has the saffron robe, and then the arms bowl and comes to the Buddha as a monk with the psychic powers. This is called Ehibhikku, the come monk, the meaning. So only the Buddha can do this. Only a few people got this opportunity in the dispensation. Even the son, Rahula, the Siddhartha's Buddha son, he didn't get this. You need a special merit for that. Arahant monks cannot do this, only the Buddha can. So Uggasena became Ehibiku uh, monk. Uh, and later on, his wife and son was thinking, my husband, my dearly husband. And he was so skillful and smart in the practice, in the show, and went to the Buddha. With the order, he went to the monastery. Now, what, who is there? In the show, he said, she said to herself, I don't need this. 
I don't need anything. I should go to the Buddha as well. And she went with his with her son and got the opportunity order of nuns. She became an arahant too. And then the son became a monk and he became an arahant too. This is not the actually um, the discourse I have to share with you. I know this is not. Yes, this is my discourse for you today. Kalamas. Kalama. Kalamas is a group of people. They lived in Kesaputta. Kesaputta is, uh, is a city in India. Such a beautiful discourse from the Buddha. Get the name of this discourse, okay? This is available in numerical discourses. Numerical, the uh, Anguttara Nikaya. And, oh, I should share. You can see Harry, right? All right. Yes, one thing. So in Anguttara Nikaya, in the book of three, you have this beautiful sutta. This is from Bhikkhu Bodhi, the Venerable Bhante. And this translation is actually from uh, Bhikkhu Sujato, right? Sujato's translation from Pali. So I've heard a long time the Buddha was wandering in the land of the Sons, together with a large sum of mendicants, when he arrived at the town, the Kalamas named Isamuta. The Kalamas of Isamuta heard. It seems the ascetic Pratama, a Satyan, got forth from a Satyan family, has arrived uh, at Kasimuta. He has his good reputation. That the last one is perfected, a fully awakened Buddha. It's good to see such perfected ones. Then the Kalamas went up to the Buddha uh, before sitting down to one side. Some bowed, some exchanged greetings and polite conversation. Some held up their joint palms uh, toward the Buddha. Some announced their name and plan while some kept silent. Seated to one side, the Kalamas said to the Buddha, there are, sir, some ascetics and Brahmin who come to Kesamutta. They explain and promote only their own doctrine. While they attack, bad mouth, disparage, and smear the doctrines of others. Then some others, ascetics and Brahmins, come to Kesamutta. They too explain and promote only their own doctrine. While they attack, Bad mouth, disparage, and smear the doctrines of other, others. So, sir, we're doubting and uncertain. I wonder who of these respected ascetic and Brahman speaks the truth and who speaks falsehood. Sadhus. Such a beautiful question, huh? I understand. So, especially when it comes to the religions, things like many, many people, not like today in India, back in the days in the buddha's time there were so many people religious leaders they come to the they come to villages and they teach people but they were confused what is right what is wrong when the buddha came to their village kesaputta this is actually kesaputta the kalamas the people they had that huge question one day what is right all the people come they say that this is good this is right and um, they sp speak in praise of their teachings, but they put down the other teachings too. What is right, Bhante? We are confused. Are you confused too? <laughs> yes, sometimes we are, right? Even in the, the Buddhist traditions, there are so many schools. Theravada tradition, Mahayana tradition, in, I don't know, the Vajrayana, Tantrayana. Uh, Zen Buddhism, many, many schools, right? What is right? What is wrong? We'll see. 
So when I say only I'm from Theravada tradition, Theravada tradition is the right, the, the correct one, the right one. How do you say this? How do you, you might say that's no bante? There are many. They are good too. Yes. This is enough kalamas for you to be doubting and uncertain. Doubt has come up in you about an uncertain matter. These kalamas don't go by oral transmission. Don't go by linear. Don't go by testament. Don't go by canonical authority. Don't rely on logic. Don't rely on inference. Don't go by recent contemplation. Don't go by the acceptance of a view after consideration. Don't go by the appearance of competence. And don't think the aesthetic is our teaching. But when you know for yourself these things are unskillful, blameworthy, criticized by sensible people, and when you undertake them, they lead to harm and suffering, then you should keep them. So, very clear, right? Very clear. You should be yourself to understand. No one is here to give you the right thing. You should be skillful to know this is right, this is wrong. Why? How, how the Buddha explains it? Don't go by oral transmission. This is what this is what my teacher, this is what we were taught when you were in school or something. Oral traditions. We have this, we have that. Don't go this. Don't do this. Don't go by lineage. We have such a huge collection of them, whatever. By lineage, with this, these are my ancestors taught me or something. Don't do this. Don't go by testament. What is this in uh, English? Testament? You don't need it? Somebody saying just a large footnote. See ya? Testimony spoken of. Okay, yeah. Don't go by testament. All right. Don't go by uh, canonical authorities. You understand this, huh? And this is what the scriptures are or something. Huh? Don't rely on logic. This might be right through the logic or something. This might be wrong. Logically, like some people, some people say this. Logically, this is right. This is wrong or something. Then do this. For example, I have a good example actually. So the people who came to Dana today, to the monastery, had a huge question. They said that a huge question. What it is? They said, we had a dog and he was sick. He was, you know, he was in suffering. So is that okay if we give something for him to die? But this is a huge question, they said. Is it a huge question? No. It's not a huge question. The answer is very clear. What is it? The answer is no. They said, no, this is, this is the tradition that we have in Canada. So the people give something for them to die peacefully. They don't suffer anymore. Yeah, why not? Everybody likes to live. Even in pain. Yes, they like to like to live. They don't like to die. Is that true or false? It's the truth. It's the Dhamma. Dhamma is the truth. Truth is the Dhamma. Right? Clear. You want to understand by yourself. Not from the government. Not from the doctors. Not from anybody else. From yourself. It's not a huge question. It's your knowledge and it's your wisdom to understand. Right? It is not the logic. Dumb is not the logic. Logically, we don't get any decisions. Right? It's not the logic. Logic is something different. Don't rely on inference. What is this again? Everybody learn this Dhamma really well and take into practice and to your uh, complete understanding. That's what we need. That's why what we need this Dhamma. Dhamma is not something 
that we can change. No, we cannot change them. Don't go by reason contemplation. Reason contemplation. This might be right, this might be wrong. Don't go for that. Don't go by acceptance of view after consideration. This is all about like how we see. Don't go by the appearance of the uh, competence. Don't think this ascetic is our respected teacher. Oh, this is our bhante. If this bhante says everything, I be expect. No, don't don't do this. But when you know for yourself these things are unskillful, blameworthy, criticized by sensible people, when you undertake them they lead to harm and suffering then you should give them up if it is unskillful give that up that's it when you give up that you're right and you are on the path right we do this everybody what do you think, Kalamas? Does greed come up in a person for the welfare or harm? Answer. A greedy individual, overcome by greed, kills living creatures, steals, commits adultery, lies, and encourages others to do the same. Is that for the lasting harm and suffering? Yes, sir. What do you think, Kalamas? Oh. Yes. Does hate come up in a person for the welfare or harm? Answer. A hateful individual, overcome by hate, kills living creatures, steals, commits adultery, lies, and encourages others to do the same. Is that for the lasting harm and suffering? Yes, sir. What do you think, Kalamas? Does delusion come up in a person for the welfare or harm? Answer. The deluded individual, overcome by delusion, kills living creatures, steals, commits adultery, lies, and encourages others to do the same. Is that for the lasting harm and suffering? Yes, sir. What do you think, Kalamas? Are these things skillful or unskillful? Unskillful, sir. Sadly, sadly, sadly. Blameworthy or blameless? Blameworthy, mm -hmm. sir. Criticized or praised by sensible people? Criticized by sensible people, sir. Okay, so um, you learn three things actually from here. Number one is uh, number one is greed. Greed, greed. What is greed? We say in Pali, tanha or trishna or craving or whatever. Attachment or the desire. Is skillful or unskillful? Huh? Greed is skillful or unskillful? Greed is unskillful. So with the greed, people kill, steal, commit adultery, and lie, and encourage others to do the same. If that is for good or harm, lasting harm or suffering, definitely suffering. Neither. What do you think, Kalams? Does hate come, come up in a person for their welfare or harm? The next one is hate. Greed, you know, the basic defilements we have, all the all the sentient beings have greed, hatred, and delusion. And that's it. Greed, these are the roots of unwholesome colleagues. Okay. Greed, hatred, and delusion. Greed, hatred, and delusion. Raga, Dvesha, Moha. This is what we want to overcome. An hateful individual overcome by hate kills living creatures, steals, commits erratory, lies, and encourage others to do the same. Is that for their well-being, last, lasting harm and suffering? Yes, sir. So what do you think, Kalam? This delusion, what is delusion actually? Delusion is not knowing the noble truth. Not knowing the truth is called delusion. Without understanding the reality is called the delusion. We don't know this is suffering. This is cause. This is the cause of suffering. Nothing. It's called delusion. 
deloaded individual or combined delusion. So because of the delusion, they kill living creatures, still commit adultery, lie, encourage other people to do the same. This is this leads to suffering. What do you think, Kalamat? Are these things skillful all unskillful? Unskillful, sir. Blameworthy or blameless? Blameworthy, sir. Criticized or praised by sensible people? Criticized by sensible people, sir. When you undertake them, do they lead to harm and suffering or not? Or how do you see this? When you undertake them, they lead to harm and suffering. That's how we see it. So, Kalamas, when I said, please don't go by oral transmission, don't go by lineage, don't go by testament, don't go by can uh, canonical authority, don't rely on logic, don't rely on inference, don't go by recent contemplation, don't go by the acceptance of a view after consideration, don't go by the appearance of competence, and don't think the ascetic is our respected teacher. But when you know for yourselves these things are unskillful, blameworthy, criticized by sensible people, and when you undertake them, they lead to harm and suffering, then you should give them up. That's what I said, and that is why I said it. Please, Kalamas. All right. So this is called the Dhamma. When you understand this is skillful, this leads to happiness. This is the Dhamma that we should practice. Is that right? Yes, yes. If that gives you kind of regret or something, let that go. Doing that. That gives you so much of peace and happiness. You're acting. Is that right? Yes. So maybe some sometimes you might be invited for parties or something to drink. You by yourself know that this is the wrong thing. That gives me some kind of suffering. You don't need any teachers to teach that. Do you? You don't need. Then you can let that go. And you're free. And you're on the path of Dhamma. Um, does contentment come up in a person for their welfare or not? Welfare is served. An individual who is content not overcome by greed, doesn't kill living creatures, steal, commit adultery, lie, or encourage others to do the same. Is that for their lasting welfare and happiness? Yes, sir. What do you think, Kalamas? Does love come up in a person for their welfare, welfare or harm? Does understanding come up in a person for their welfare or harm? Is that for their lasting welfare and happiness? Yes. What do you think, Alamas? Are these things skillful or unskilled? Skillful, skillful, son. Blameworthy or blameless? Blameless, sir. Criticized or praised by sensible people. Praised by sensible people, sir. When you undertake them, do they lead you to welfare and happiness or not? How do you see this? When you undertake them, they lead you to welfare and happiness. That's how we see it. So, so, this is very clear, right? So when you yourself understand this is right, this is wrong, that's the practice, okay? That's the that's the advice of the Buddha. So they they became very confused when the when the other sects of the religion leaders came to their village and taught many many things. They were confused. This is right. This is wrong. That's what happened to us too. In the general world, the government said that this is right. This is but yourself should understand this is wrong. For example. The thing that I shared today, this gives you kind of suffering, not anything happiness. So we need that wisdom to understand, even though the government says, this is right, no problem, don't go to me. Why? This is not the advice of the Buddha. Many, many people might say many, many things. Don't listen to them. Why not? That leads to the suffering you will have to regret. So, 
What do you think, Kalamas? These things are skillful or unskillful? Think about it. This is skillful or uns unskillful? Good or bad? You might understand. Skillful. Giving is a good thing. So you know that contentment and non-hatred. And the next one is non-delusion. So the green, the opposite side we have giving and generosity, content, being generous, sharing is a skillful thing that, that can make you happy. Definitely, yes. When you give, you never regret about your giving. You have helped some people maybe sometimes in the past, back in the days. You regret it today? No. Nope. You have given some food to some people. Are you like you crying today about that giving? No, you're happy. The mind becomes so happy. So giving and sharing is a good thing that you should understand. This is good. This this is something very good. Make me happy. It is called the Dhamma and it is called the merit. You need your brain to understand that's the advice of the Buddha. If you are confused, and then the next one is hatred. Hatred is good or bad. Non-hatred is good or bad. Loving kindness, compassion is a skillful thing. It's a good feeling. You don't have to have a teacher to teach this. Compassion is a good thing. Helping others. When they are in, maybe in kind of a difficult situation, help them. It's a good thing. It's not something bad. So that's what the Buddha said to Kalamas. And non-delusion is the same thing, okay? So then you undertake them, they lead to welfare and happiness. That's how you see it. So giving something makes you happy and, uh, and that's a merit. And that's a merit that's so powerful. Back in the days, very long ago, there was a different Buddha called Kashyapa. Our Buddha is called Gautama. Gautama, Supreme Buddha. Before that, there was a Buddha called Kashyapa. In the future, there will be a different Buddha called Metteya. How is the lifetime of that Buddha? 80,000 years. In the time period of Kashyapa, Supreme Buddha, People live 20 years, 20,000 years. And that in that time, there was an Arahan, the, the Arahan monk, his enlightened monk. And when he was going on his arms round, two people, a woman and a man, husband and wife, they had their lunch with them. And the Bhante, when, the, when he was coming to them, they were happy to give their lunch to the Bhante, to the monk. Happily, they offered that lunch, the food to the monk. And they wished, maybe understand the same Dhamma he understood by the power of this man. It's a beautiful idea. Giving that dana to that Arahant monk, they wished the same thing. What? Maybe understand the same Dhamma he understood. He didn't preach anything. And then the, the monk could see the mind of these two people. And so these people are so lucky. They accumulate such an immense powerful merit that can bring the perfect understanding in the future by the power of this giving. There are two things actually in this. What is it? Giving and the wish. Both. Both are very important. Sometimes some people wish, when they make their marriage, they wish like, may I be so beautiful in my next life. It's not a bad thing though. Well, it's useless. Like, it's not useless though again. <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> because of the merit they accumulate, they become beautiful. Why? That's the reason and the result. Yes, of course. When you wish that may I understand this real Dhamma and be free from suffering, that helps. 
that's what they did offering that dana the, the food to the monk they wish the same thing he saw this wish and then he had a slight smile on his face because of the happiness that came from his mind for these two people making merit and wishing to realize the noble truths in the future and he saw in the next buddha's dispensation they really be fortunate to understand the dhamma when that bhante smiles a little bit that woman said to her husband he might be an acrobat before she said maybe she saw that bhante was a little uh, i don't know because of the smile when she saw that smile from the bante mom she said he might be an acrobat the husband said mm -hmm. oh yes that's it that's all period they died and reappeared in the heavenly world by the power until the supreme with the gotama comes to this world they enjoyed heavenly happiness that was their last birth in the human world they came back the woman was born in a family of acro see the karma and as that man said mm -hmm, he was reborn in a very rich family they all were rich because the merit and later on he came to this acrobat girl and married who are they when she was showing the, the acrobat show that man was so inspired by her skill and he wanted to marry her they married and when they were showing the show in the the, the skills in the ground the buddha came and said munja pure munja pacha so I want you to read it again. This is so important, everybody. Is it right? Share my screen, right? Let go of regret over the past. Take this. This is the skill. This is the dumb. You know that regret is. unskillful it's not skillful it doesn't give you anything rather than suffering or sorrow let go of dreaming of the future my future will be like this or something you should have a good future you should wish for that too actually it is not like you let go of everything you just stay here nothing nothing to do anything i don't work i don't speak i don't need friends or something it's not taking the whole thing together live your life comfortable skillfully being generous being kind and compassionate and being wise not like greed hate and no delusion and be happy about your merits all the time and let go of the clinging to the person what is it don't grasp everything like this is me my my no my stuff just live your life happily take you as a special person in this world who came to this world for what? to give something not to take right you have come to this world to give something virtuous to this world not to take Not to receive. What can we receive from this world? For you to your next life, the degree, the PhDs, no, the money, billions of dollars, for your next life, no, the gold, the money, the silver, the cars, the the properties, the lands, what? Nothing. We have nothing here to take. Maybe nothing. The people, friends, 
But we need this. Like, we need this to live. We need food. We need a good house. We need a vehicle to come to the monastery. We need gas. We need money. Understanding the whole thing. This is just for a temporary period of time to become comfortable. Not grasping. This is me, my own mindset. When you understand this, this beautiful Dhamma, this part, you become a very comfortable person. Happy, relaxed, and mindful. Making lots of merit. Go beyond this existence. Do not seek any protection or happiness in this world. You do not get. Is that right or wrong? In the future, this world will be so dangerous. With the technology, I don't know about the technology. You know about this? The technology is like very, very corrupted. And then very, I don't know. We have no security. We have no privacy in this world. Do we? No privacy. In the Buddha said, Nati Loki Raho Nama Spali. There are there are no secrets in the world. No secrets. You know, and the devas know what you do. Devas are the heavenly beings. Okay, they can read your mind. All right, everybody. So go beyond this existence. That's what we need. We, we don't need. We don't seek any protection, any happiness in this world. Just we uh, we go here and there. We seek many many things, but. That's it. And again, after this life, we will be somewhere else, according to the karma. If it is a bad place, who will be responsible for that? The people, the government? All right. For example, if I go to a, a bad realm next time, maybe to become a ghost, me, can you save me? You have maybe thousands of dollars for me to spend. Oh, this is Savabhanti who taught really good dharma. We should save him. Can you? Oh, Bhante is going to go, <laughs> going to go to the, the ghost world tomorrow. Can we save Bhante? The technology, well, develop technology. Also, we have very good smartphones. Can we save the Bhante? What about your money, your education, your skills? Nothing works. Why? It is not the Dhamma. Only the Dhamma can do this. We cannot change that karma that way. But when we do something good, we can do. Maybe you collect good merit and share with the Bhante. May the Bhante be protected by the power of this merit. That works. That's called the karma. You can change with the karma. Okay, Karma can be changed. That's the rule. And with the mind liberated in a way, do not come again and again to the world of birth and death, birth and knowledge. Do not come to this world. Remember? Why did you come to this world? Why? To give people, to give, to give something virtuous to this world, to make this world happy. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. All right. We can continue. Peace. Yes. So, uh, I have a lot of regrets to the past. Mm -hmm. Wish, Me too. You know, I wish I finished my degree. I wish, you know, many things. So, how do you? Oh, I know a lot of practice, mindfulness, meditation will help. Oh yes. What are the advice you have, like in terms of, like to the regrets, like you just let it be, um, look back in the past. Read this dhamma a lot. Mm -hmm. Read. Read. You, wherever you read, you will see the answer. Wherever. Read whatever you like to read. Only the Dhamma, pure Dhamma. You will see the answer. They are. You have that answer. 
Buddha wanted you to understand the impermanence of this world. This is the liberation. Impermanent. The world is impermanent. Impermanence. And let go of the desire for that is the perfect answer for this. So, of course, like taking this whole thing like this, me, mine, or myself, causes problems. Yeah, be comfortable, be yourself, and be, co be confident, and, and be mindful. Then you can do something to achieve your goals here in this world. That makes you comfortable. But understand, this is just for this life. It's not something negative, right? It's the reality. Only to this life, it's limited. It's limited, limited things. Do not suffer for something limited. Like give your best to something really worthwhile. Okay? What do you say? Collect merit, lots of merit, okay? And be happy about the merit of others too. When some people give, be happy about their giving. See this, this, um, this Vimana monastery mansion. We have time, okay? So this is a Devata, a deity from the heavenly world. She had a beautiful friend uh, when she was in the human world. She is Vishaka, Vishaka made a huge mansion to the Bhantis. Mansion is, uh, mansion is uh, uh, the monastery. It's a huge monastery. She spent thousands of money uh, selling her ornament. She made that monastery called Purvarama, Migar, Migarmat Prasadi. And her friend did not have anything to spend. She, she was a poor woman. She didn't have merit. One day in the human world, I had a friend who lived in the city of Sabaki. She built a great monastery for the community of monks. I was extremely happy about that. I sincerely rejoiced in her gift and the merit that she gained. The sight of the monastery was pleasing to my eyes. As, as a result of the truly rejoicing in my friend, Meritorious seed is a wonderful divine, divine mansion has appeared for me. Starting, starting. Did you get that idea? She rejoiced the merit. She was happy in, in the merit. The, some, the other people rejoiced. So we need this. When we become happy about other people's generosity, their virtuous behavior, their their happiness, we accumulate many, many, many. We should train this. We, our mind should be trained, actually. This is called the joy, altruistic joy. In Pali, we say, mudita. But this word, mudita. Mudita is the happiness about the happiness of other people. It is a very powerful merit. And we minimize the jealousy. So she gained this heavenly mansion because her mind was very pleased about the merit that the other people accumulated. She was happy. So uh, Vishaka was reborn in a higher realm, actually. This woman was born in the second heavenly world. See, that merit was so much of power. See, she didn't do anything. Nothing. But she was fortunate. Huh? We need the same thing. These things are skillful. My most praised by sensible people. But you undertake them, they lead to welfare and happiness. Then you should acquire them and keep them. That's what I said. This is why. Yes. Then yes. the noble discipline is rid of desire, rid of ill will, and focused, aware, and lost. They meditate, spreading a heart full of love one, to one direction. And to the second, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way above, below, with frogs, everywhere, all around, they spread our hearts of love in the world. Finally, it's fancy. None of us free of an enemy and go with us. Everybody, when you develop metta, loving kindness in your mind, you can overcome all the bad karmas. 
that you can accumulate very powerful merit. Does that make sense? When you have metta, may all beings be happy. The merit you accumulate is more powerful than anything else. This is the development of your mind and minimize your hatred and all other bad karmas, bad, bad defilements. This is what we need, especially during the in the in the world today we are living in. Because we see so many things. If you turn your TV on, the news gives you so much of bad things to make you angry. It's not your loving kindness. You have a simple answer for this. How, how can you overcome this? Turn that off. Three words. <laughs> Sit for a while and have metta for all beings in the battlefield the, who made the arms, the U.S. people, not the U.S. people, the, the, the companies and then the people and all the people who killed the murderers. Have metta. May they be happy. May they be, may they be free from suffering. You are protected and you accumulate so much of powerful merit. That's what we need. Very rarely we see people, they help other people. Very rarely, I don't know. But when you see something very good in the world, be happy about their happiness. Rejoice. It's a different feeling. It is called the altruistic joy, mudita. It has, a different, see? So sitting for a while, maybe for five minutes, have this. Get rid of ill will, unconcerned, aware. You have love, which is called the loving kindness. For all directions, all beings in the entire universe, regardless of any backgrounds. Maybe these are people from Asia. These people are from United States. These people are from um, Africa, whatever. Nothing. All the humans, all the sentient beings, all the animals, all the ghosts, all the hell realms, all the, the heavenly beings, be happy, be safe, be free from anger, be free from hatred. That's the practice. When you have metta, no one comes to you and you and blame, no one can blame you. This is wrong. You're doing something wrong. No one can. When you take care of your parents, for example, no one comes to you and says, this is wrong, don't do this. No one can say this. Why? Why not? No one can say this. This is Dharma. This is the truth. When you speak bad words, anybody in the world can come and say, this is wrong, stop it. They can say that. Why? That's wrong. You understand this is right, this is wrong, this is the practice. When you read them, when you read a lot and lot and lot, you will see oh, everything is wholesome and good karma and wholesome and skillful. That is the practice. And then the second, sit for a while and spread comp compassion. What is the difference between loving kindness and compassion? Compassion is the feeling you develop in your mind mm. that you have kind of a empathy, right? To help other people when they're in suffering. Maybe physically, you help them. Some people are in hunger, you help. Compassion, right? In all, in, in all ways. And they meditate spreading Second and third and the fourth, in the same way, love the Lord upon every day, all around, to spread a heart full of compassion to the neighbor. Abundant, substantive, limitless, clear, and gently, and sad of sadness. This is called compassion. What is the first one? Loving kindness. The second, compassion. The third. They meditate, they meditate spreading a heart full of rejoicing in one direction. 
into the cycle, into the fire, into the forest. In the same way, above, the love across everywhere, all around, they spread a part to what we are seeing to the whole world. Abundant, expansive, limitless, fear of enmity and love. Sad, sad. Next time, when you see a huge mansion, a house, be happy with these people are very lucky. They have accumulated lots of merit. They have a good life. Be happy. When you see beautiful children, be happy. Right? When they have a beautiful car, comfortable, be happy. Happiness about the happiness of other people. We need. This is called, called rejoicing. Makes you so much of good car that, an, that can overcome your bad car. It's very powerful. Okay? These are called actually Brahma Viharas. You see the next one too. They meditate spreading a heart full of extra energy to, to one direction, to the seconds, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way, above the low cross, everywhere, all around, they spread a heart full of community to the whole world, abundant, expansive, and the blood, free and I can't say, and I can't yeah, I know. These are called Brahma Viharas, four things. Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upekka. Metta, loving kindness. Metta. Karuna, compassion. It's a different one, okay? Mudita, joy or altruistic joy or rejoicing. Upekka, equanimity. These are called equanimity. These are called Brahma Viharas. Brahmas are the the devas, the heavenly beings who live in the higher realms, high divinities. They have these four qualities all the time. They live with metta, loving kindness, karuna, compassion, mudita, altruistic joy, upekka, equanimity. That's how they live. Their entire life is created, like they are born like that. The mother and the father has these two, four qualities too. Especially mom and dad. For children, they have these four qualities. This Buddha said, okay, not me. That's why the Buddha said the parents are Brahmas. Prema sorry. Parents are like Brahmas. They have these four beautiful qualities. Loving kindness, compassion, altruistic joy, and equanimity. What is equanimity? You have no any like uh, everybody is same. You do not Treat them separately. This, these people are good. These people are good. I treat it in a different ways. No. Equanimity. And you understand that? When they do something good, they will rejoice their merit in their merit. When they do something bad, they will experience suffering. You have that equal mind to all. And also equanimity has some other aspects too. Like you are stable with the happiness and suffering. You have an equal mind. When you have blame or praise, you have that equal mind. Uh, when you have happiness and suffering, uh, love, ala, gain and loss, you have the same stable mind. Love, alab, dukkha, sapa, ninda, prasansa, blame and praise, and love, alab, dukkha, sapa, ninda, prasansa. I don't remember the other. Fame, fame and spirit. Fame and of, yes. You have the same equal mind, which is called the equanimity. Balanced mind. You have that. Right? All right. This is the last part. When that noble disciple has a mind is free of enmity and ill will, uncorrupted and purified, they want four consolations in the present life. It turns out there is underworld and good and bad deeds of the research. Then, when the body breaks up after death, I believe born in a good place, like when you die. This is the first consolation they want. Starting, Samuel. First consolation. If you believe in your next life, if you believe in your next life, yeah, I will definitely be born somewhere else next time. With the good karma you have accumulated by these four, you believe in your next life. You will be reborn in a heavenly realm. Good place. This is the first consolation you have. Why? You have these four. The second consolation you have. 
if it turns out there is no other world, then good and bad means don't have a result. Then in the present life, I'll give myself free of enmity and then will. And trouble will happen. This is the second consolation they want. Sad and sad. If you do not believe in your next life, yeah. This Buddha said, you are happy if you do not believe. As well, you are happy. Why? So, um, I will keep myself free of enmity enmity and ill will, uh, untroubled and unhappy and happy. If you if you believe, you will be more happy, like you will be reborn in a good place. If you do not believe, you are happy in this very life. The third consolation. If it turns out that bad things happen to people who do bad things, and since I have no bad intentions, and since I'm not doing anything bad, how can suffering touch me? This is the third consolation we want. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. The fourth. If it turns out that bad things don't happen, people do bad things, then I still see myself pure on both sides. This is the fourth consolation is Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. When the noble disciple has a mind that is free of enmity and ill will, undefiled and purified, they've won these four consolations in the present life. That's so true, blessed one. That's so true, holy one. When that noble disciple has a mind that's free of enmity and ill will, undefiled and purified, they've won these four consolations in the present life. Excellent, sir. Excellent. We go for refuge to Master Gautama, to the teaching, and to the Medican Sangha. From this day forth, may the Buddha remember us as lay followers who have gone for refuge for life. Sadhu, sadhu. This is the Kala Misutai which today, the Kesaputti of the people. And um, in this discourse, you might understand, maybe, uh, the good thing and the bad thing. You want to See very clearly, this is good, this is bad. Do not believe these people are speaking like this, these people are saying this, this and that. Don't believe in this. Take into your wise consideration. This is skillful. Never lead me to a good destination. Then you will understand this is not something that I should practice. When you understand this is good, practice that. And then this will lead you for your happiness here and hereafter. Does that make sense? And also, you will have these four kinds of the, uh, the beautiful abodes. These are called the divinely dwelling here. The Karani Sutta, Metta, Karuna, Mutta, Upeka. Practice these four. You can overcome all. You will be happy here and hereafter because these are more powerful good karma you accumulate. All right. In this journey of samsara, I talked to you that uh, uh, about uh, Mahamuggalana Ganabalbante, the blue colored statue you have the upstairs. We have records. He went to hell two times. We have records. Right? Two times he suffered. That's the record. Uh, what about the, the information which is not recorded? Millions of times we have suffered in hell in this journey of samsara. This is the nature of everybody. Even that great disciple suffered two times in hell, recorded. He came from hell and understood this dharma this time. This is the nature of this journey. Okay, You know the Buddha, when he was coming accumulating good karma, he was born in hell. Did you know about that? He became a king once and ruled 20 years as a bad ruler. For that bad karma, he was reborn in hell and suffered for 80,000 years in hell. After hell, he became a human again. And he was born in a king's family again. When he saw his father is ruling the country, he was extremely scared. Temir, his name. The prince Temir 
was extremely scared of his father's way of ruling the country. Why? My father is doing so much bad things. So much bad things when he understood this is I did and I experienced suffering in hell for 80, 80,000 years, ruling 20 years country in such a small bad thing. He did not speak. He did not he didn't he pretended like, like a dead bird that like a dead blind and uh dead deaf blind and uh mute yes he pretended for 60 16 years and then this father said this prince is nothing we don't need him take him to the forest and kill. You don't need him. His father said. And then people were taking this prince to the, uh, the, the forest to kill him, to behead. When they dug a hole in the ground and um, to bury him, he said, I'm not deaf. I'm not deaf. I'm not mute. I'm not blind. Um, I have a good eyesight. I clearly see everything because of my father's bad ruling. I was extremely scared. The Bodhisattva, Buddha to be, said, I don't need this world and I'm, go I'm going to Himalayas to become an ascetic. And he practiced a system, a system in the Himalayas and was born into the higher realm of Brahma world next time. So, this is the this is the nature of this journey you and me are treading on. Okay. When we meet this Dhamma, take this everybody. Action we have. The only consolation or the only happiness is this Dhamma. Nothing else. 